Christ, grace and peace be with you all. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And one of the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you are a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. 
You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Amen. One of the ways to look at the Gospel text today is to ponder about Jesus, who seems to be the original wealth management consultant, a broker, no less. Perhaps he was accepted into the Jerusalem stock market at the exchange, or he was certainly certified as a dealer in the commodity market, trading such things as figs and olives and clementines. One can make this supposition, you see, by the way in which Jesus is talking about the wealthy landowner and the amazing return he gets on five and two talents that were distributed. Now, we need to remember that each talent is worth many years of earnings. I mean many years of earnings. Each talent today would be worth in today's money between $750,000 and $1 million each, depending upon the Dow and whatever morning. And yes, we read correctly that they doubled that amount. Now, if you ask your broker how you can double your earnings, you will run into the rule of 72, as you know. Quite frankly, it will depend on the risk you're willing to take. If you want to guarantee, for example, 5% return on your investments, just do the multiplication by 72, and I believe it's 14.4 years you will have doubled your investment. If you want to guarantee 7% by 72, around 10.6 years, you will double your money. Now, it seems to me that Jesus shows a very rapid return on the investment. And we all know that he must have been into high-risk products. The higher the risk, the greater the return. Or lose everything. In the venture capital world, one out of four on a group of ten will make it. The other three-fifths will certainly lose a lot. So risk is the word this morning. Jesus is telling the story in the middle of his own high-risk venture. This parable is a conversation during the last few days of his earthly life. He was pushing the envelope all the way. He left this wonderful little town of Galilee. He was safe in Galilee, and things were going well. But he went to Rome because he, to Jerusalem, because he could be seen better by the Romans. So his risk of ministry has been upped many percentage points. And yes, the story this morning is all about risk. You are high rolling the master's wealth. Five talents, two talents, ten million, four. Well done, say the master when he returns. I will give you even more responsibility. Now the one talent person took a whole different approach. He thinks, hmm, if the commodity market sinks, I'm going to be okay. Actually, he took the Pennsylvania Dutch track. 
Yeah, I hid it under my mattress and the rest is in the barn under the hay. But that was certainly not what the master wanted, was it? He was treated about as harshly as any person in all of Scripture. Which leads me to a question I will have for St. Peter, the sacred soul of the gate of heaven. There are some who say, Tom, you don't have to worry about those questions because you're never going to meet St. Peter anyway. But what would have happened, for example, in this story if the five and the two would have had a crash and the bottom gave out of the market? Well, the point is, obviously, not about doubling your money at all. The point of this parable is about your living and taking risk. It's so interesting that when the King James Version of the Bible was translated, we began to move from financial talents at a million dollars each to your own personal talent. What are the talents that God has given you in order for you to risk? Do you remember last week's sermon? And that's high risk, folks. <laughs> last week in the parable, before our lesson today, Jesus said that while you wait for my return, the second coming of Christ, God is still active. God did not leave the universe. God continues to be active with us and in our living. We are stewards of all that ongoing activity. The parable today tells us, okay, stewards, this is how you ought to behave till the bridegroom comes back to the party. Not only are we stewards, but this is how you ought to act. And the greatest risk it turns out to be is taking no risk at all. The worst thing you can do is not care deeply and not care profoundly enough about anything so that you will not give your entire spirit to something that is needing your spirit. The worst risk is to take none at all with the ministry that lies before you. Therefore, you and I miss the mark Definition of sin, right? You and I are sinners by playing it safe. Living with an ultra-conservative caution, with prudent overtones, is not to be done. John Buchanan, who is, um, who is a modern uh, um, commentator, reminds us that taking no risk of your faith is one of the seven deadly sins of the ancient church. It's an old word. It's called sloth. Sloth means not caring, not loving, especially not rejoicing in God's good gifts which God gave to you, not living up to your potential, digging a hole and burying anything good that you are rather than using it is slothful living. Therefore, this wonderful parable extends our stewardship beyond knowing that God is alive and active but also that you should move to risky behavior. You need to risk and make necessary moves so that other people with us might engage the creation and might engage others in caring and just solutions for everyone. Stewards now are not only those who know, but stewards are also those that do, that take risks to understand 
assistance for others. Live fully, therefore, with the blessings God so well provides you. We all are asked today, as I read it, to take five into ten and to take two into four. And that's a real adventure sometimes in trust in God because it's a high-risk venture to move from five to ten and two to four. It's a venture of being a steward of the gifts of God for the people of God. We say it so many Sundays. We are gifts of God for the people of God. There's no digging a hole here. Amen. saints who have gone before us and giving thanks for God's blessings, we pray for the church all in need and God's good creation. We pray for the church that it continues to sow seeds of mercy, love, forgiveness, and joy, even as it anticipates your coming again to bring restoration to the new heaven and earth. Bless and strengthen our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, and Father John, and Grace Lutheran Church, and Pastor Marcia. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all creation, for the wonder of climate and tide, of mountains, valleys, rivers, and oceans, that we become better stewards of this bounty, caring for what you have made and consuming only what we truly need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all nations, their leaders and governments, that they replace power, 
pride, greed, and enmity with justice, mercy, reconciliation, and peacemaking. Bring lasting peace to this world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the lonely, the disheartened, the grieving, those who suffer from debilitating illness, those who cannot speak for themselves, and those in any need, especially the family of Fred Zerbe, who joined the Church Triumphant this week. And for Guy, Beverly, Annie, Beth, Kristen, Frank, Ralph, David, Rodney and Dorothy, Tom, Pat, Joan, Brian, Bill, Jan Rita, and those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our vestry and ministry committees that they continue to encourage us and send us out in your peace and love to follow your call. Bless those whom we remember in prayer this week, Christian Durr, Ronald Durr, Grace Detweiler, Russ Dysinger, and Anita Dolak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints, for their faithfulness and perseverance in following you, whose examples will bring us closer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and hopes, good shepherd, and bring us safely into all joy and peace through Christ our Lord.